Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. In the last episode, we made our way through Radiant Forest into Pewter City. And uh, in this episode, I realize I'm an idiot. Um, this part here, and the little piece of grass before Viridian Forest is actually considered Route 2. Um, so I'm allowed to catch a Pokemon, except it's a Rattata, which I already have. So no, I can't. Damn it. Um, I was kind of hoping for either a Caterpie or a Weedle. Um, they're both uh, a little bit uncommon in this patch of grass. I think there's something like 5% chance of meeting them. Um, there's mostly Pidgeys and Rattata, which is a little bit unfortunate. But yeah, um, I kind of realized that I'm majorly screwed for this upcoming gym battle. Um, partly because of the Pokemon that I've lost, uh, Pancake, uh, RMP, rest in peace, and um, Pokemon that I couldn't capture, that friggin' Weedle, and also the Pokemon that I have, Hope and, you know, Fruit Loop. So I'm going to use this episode, or at least part of it, to uh, do some grinding. Um, I'm going to do this on screen, I'm going to speed up the video because I know it's not very entertaining to watch. Um, I'm going to talk through it about some stuff I want to go through. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do this um, if ever again, just because uh, it's boring for you and it's, I don't think it's really necessary to see. Um, hopefully it won't be something that I need to do um, if my Pokemon can survive long enough and I can train them properly and I got a nice diverse team, I should be able to uh, get through the rest of the game pretty easily, or at least a lot easier than up to this point. Um, this is definitely going to be uh, a deciding moment, uh, one of those definitive moments where I'm going to look back, where we're going to look back together. That's right, you and me, we're going to look back, we're going to remember how I screwed up the very beginning of this Let's Play, faced some arduous challenges, and then pulled through. But yeah, I'm gonna go back to Radiant Forest now and do some grinding. I'm actually gonna use this time now to talk about how the Let's Play and uh, YouTube in general is going for me. Um, when I first started out, I didn't really expect to get a whole lot of views. And um, from the three episodes that I've released, I've got about 70 views total, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. Um, you know, I would have been happy with you know 10 each episode. Uh, and the views are still coming in, you know, every day. I check the status on YouTube and more and more views are going in. And it's uh, different people, it's just not my friends, which is a bonus. Um, the videos are also getting uh, the occasional like, which is awesome. You know, thank you for doing that. You know, I don't like asking for likes or comments or subscribers, but I like to have people, you know, if they genuinely feel about commenting on something. Oh, look, a Pikachu. Pikachu, I love you. Uh, oh. Another Pikachu. I guess it loves me too. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, um, I I've watched a couple of um, people on YouTube before, and they always um, ask for you know likes or comments or for them people to just subscribe to them at the end of every video, and I find it kind of annoying. Uh, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. Nor do you. Um. Anyways. So yeah, I mean, if, if you feel like you want to leave a comment, if you want to like the video, if you want to dislike the video, feel free to do it. I don't really care. That's not true. I do care. But I'm not going to bully you into doing it. Um, it should become natural to you. Um, but yeah, overall, in general, getting some pretty good feedback, which is uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I feel like I'm doing the right things. Um, I'm sure there's some things I'm doing wrong, but uh, I'm okay with that for now. Um, Things have been going so well that I've thought about doing um, a couple more LPs, um, especially in the near future, like maybe either later tonight or the next couple days. Um, I haven't quite decided what game I'm going to do. Uh, I'm thinking about either Donkey Kong Country or Kirby Superstar. Uh, they're both for the Super Nintendo. They're both games I really enjoyed as a child. Um, they're a little bit different than Pokemon, uh, whereas Pokemon's a bit of a RPG kind of game. Uh, both Kirby and Donkey Kong are uh, platformer, action, adventure kind of games, which aren't really my forte, so it should make for some sort of interesting experience. You, you guys get to see me die and, you know, yell and maybe even cry a little. But yeah, hopefully uh, I'll get those videos started up soon. And um, I'm still planning on making one video a day, at least, um, with the odd day where I don't make one. Like yesterday. Um... But I'm mostly going to be focusing on Pokemon, 
Um, the other LP, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be more of a side project. Something for me to just do when I'm kind of in between certain areas in Pokemon where I just I feel the, the drag to produce a video or I have to think about what I'm going to do next in order to, to pull through. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to that and now that uh, Hope is level 16, I think it's time to move on to the gym. However, before we do that, I'm going to be taking on the role of a tour guide. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. I'm going to be a personalized tour guide for you as I take you on a miraculous journey through Pewter City. As you can see, we have some lovely little flowers here, dancing back and forth, doing a little bobbin left and right, very nice, nice unison sync there. Um, we also have the local Poke Center, um, there's not too much to do here except for maybe stare at that really awkward Jigglypuff in the top left hand corner there, those are really freaky eyes, look at it, it's like staring into my soul. I can't explain it. Those eyes, those beautiful eyes are so attractive. I look away. I look back at them. Oh, I cannot resist. Anyways. <laughs> what was that? Don't ask me. I don't even know. Anyways, if we go over here, we can find the local Pokemart. A staple in every town. There is a house, which I don't know what's in there. Nothing important. You can ignore it for now. Um, and up here we have the museum. It's pretty big, it's pretty nice looking, except there's nothing for us to do here now. Uh, later on, when we learn a certain ability, we'll be able to um, get our way in there and obtain that item and use it somewhere else. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of stuff that I just said there, but trust me, it's going to make a lot more sense in about, I don't know, 30 episodes or so. <laughs> so bear with me. Remember that moment. Remember it. I write it down right now. You have to remember it, because I will come back to it. Don't worry. Anyways, here is the local gym. Um, as you can kind of tell with the rocks and the sand, it is a ground and rock type themed gym where the Pokemon trainers use rock and ground type Pokemon. Um, most Pokemon here will have the dual type of rock and ground. And uh, yeah, this gym shouldn't be too bad. It's the first gym. However, um, I lost my starter Pokemon, and I didn't catch anything good to, uh, to do battle here. Um, so, I'm pretty much going to be relying on the sand attack strategy. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Whoa, Paper, didn't you say back in episode 2 that sand attack is pretty useless? I think I did. You guys can't see this, but I'm actually wiggling my arms around like spaghetti. Level 5 and learn sand attack, which is going to be completely useless. See? You're right. I did say it. But actually, the sand attack strategy is very viable in this situation. Um, every time you use sand attack, you're lowering your opponent's accuracy by a certain amount. Um, it actually differs from the amount of times that you use it. I actually had to look this up, but uh, the first time you use it, it lowers their accuracy by 25%. And then the next time it's 10%, then 10% again, then 7%, then 5.5%, and then it keeps on dropping like that as you do more. So it's not really worth it to keep on doing it. We're going to do it four or five times just so that if that's a low enough point that the enemy can't really land a hit on me. Because as you're about to see, my attacks are not very effective and they do very little damage which is going to make this quite a long fight um, I'm hoping for the occasional critical hit um, to make things a lot easier um, normally this battle wouldn't be too bad like I said before um, each of the starting Pokemon um, are pretty well equipped to deal with this um, Squirtle, obviously a water type Pokemon um, can use a water type attack, I think Bubble is the first one it learns uh, I make quick work of these Pokemon, as it's a super effective move. Uh, Pancake, the Bulbasaur, would have been great here as well. Um, they learn Vine Whip, which would also be a super effective move. Oh yeah, critical hit, yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, Vine Whip. Um, unfortunately, I lost my Pancake. And, uh, <laughs> joke. 
And um, even Charmander now in uh, Fire Red, they learn uh, Metal Claw, which is super effective against um, ground type Pokemon. Which uh, it's kind of the easy, lame way of playing with a Charmander. Because before it used to be, oh, Charmander would be so hard the first two gym battles. And now it's pretty easy. Um, alternatively, I was kind of hoping of catching a Mankey back on uh, Route 22, just on the, the left of Rain City there. Ooh, nice. Very nice, indeed. Oh, oh I thought it was dead. Um, I guess I'll use a potion in preparation for the next Pokemon. Uh, anyways, yeah, I was hoping to catch a Mankey. Uh, obviously, I caught a, a Radical instead. Um, Mankeys are fighting type Pokemon. Oops. And uh, they learned Karate Chop and Low Kick and moves like that, which would have been really useful here. I'm really sad I didn't get one. It's kind of like my my ace plan to use, but hey, what can you do? Um, uh, the next Pokemon we're about to see here is Sandshrew. I think this Pokemon is exclusively ground type, so as you'll see, my moves do a little bit more damage. Um, I guess I could talk about Pokemon types right now and in terms of damage calculations. Um, each Pokemon has a type, sometimes two, and these types uh, have naturally they have weaknesses and they have strengths. Um, if a Pokemon is weak against a certain attack, damage will be doubled, um, if the Pokemon is resistant to the attack, the damage will be halved. Um, there's certain um, instances, instances, blah, blah, tongue tied there, instances where um, Pokemon will take no damage from a certain type, but they're just naturally immune to it. Um, and also of note is each attack has a certain type, so Gust is a flying type move, and by pairing it with a flying type Pokemon, they get a, a damage multiplier which a lot of people didn't know about until later games when people really figured out the strategy well. I mean, I don't even know if it was implemented in Red and Blue. I actually don't know. I'll have to look that up. You, pro you guys probably know. You mean leave a comment in the description. Uh, but yeah. So that's why I'm not using Quick Attack. Um, Quick Attack and Gust have the same base strength. Um, both of them are not very effective against ground-type Pokemon. But because Gus is a flying type move, I get that bonus multiplier. So I'm trying my best to make these battles go fast. I really am, trust me. But the Shandrew's almost dead. Come on, one more hit. One more hit. Come on, hope. One more hit. Was that it? Yes, nice. And just like that, I beat the trainer. Light years. Ha. This guy doesn't know space science. And now, we are at Brock. Can you smell what the Brock is cooking? I can. It smells like chicken. Is that foreshadowing? Am I going to die? Am I going to win? Find out next time on Let's Play Pokemon by Red.